Hey, welcome back to the Houdini for MoGraph series. Today's tutorial is going to be a little different than the others. Uh, rather than covering a specific Houdini topic, we're going to be exploring a CG style. When people see this low poly look, they immediately think Cinema 4D, Blender, Maya, maybe really anything but Houdini. But with its superpower of proceduralism, I feel like Houdini really should just be the top of the list. So let's take a look at how easy this look can be achieved. We're going to start by making a grid that's a little wider and crank up the subdivisions. Now let's draw on where we want the water using a paint node. Hit enter. I'm going to make a little river leading to a lake. And make a little island here. And we're not going to see it right now, but I'm going to go ahead and drop an attribute blur, setting it to mask so that we can smooth things out later. All right, now make a point pop and make the terrain. Find the mask attribute in. And then make a multiply node and promote the parameter. Now if we hook this up to a float to vector in the y position and add it to the original, we can hop back up and set that to a negative value to push it down. And I'm going to mess around with that blur now to smooth it out a bit. So to add detail, we're going to make two instances of turbulent noise. For this first one, just do the same float to vector in the Y and add that. Uh, this is going to give us the whole thing just its general shape. So we're going to go super low frequency and I'm actually going to clamp it so that we just get motion going upwards. And this second noise we're going to use to give more detail. So first off, set that to 3D and then just play around with the values to make a natural feeling terrain. Now, here comes the low poly look. Drop a remesh to get us these nice even triangles. And I'm going to increase the size a bit. And if you can see in the wireframe, all the, this nice detail, but it actually just looks smooth. So we have to do two things. The first is we're going to create a bevel, set it to a really low distance. And if, if you actually need this to be low poly, maybe it's for a game engine or something, you could skip this step, but I like adding it because then the renders, it gives it like a softer, less CG feel, maybe like it's actually made of paper. So the second step, the more important one is to drop a facet node and check on cusp polygons and set the angle all the way to zero. And there we go. We've got a little nice low poly landscape. Now for the water, I'm just going to duplicate this entire setup and delete the mask bits. Go into our VOPs and delete those here as well. And I'm also going to delete that bigger noise. And then just promote all our attributes for the smaller noise. And then I'll merge this with our landscape. And I'm going to actually give them some color just so that it's easier to differentiate between the two. All right, cool. So first off, let's lower this water grid. And now I'm just gonna mess around with the noise a bit. All right, and just add the expression $F times 0.01 to the Y offset to give it some motion. And you can see that it's flickering a lot, and that's just because the remesh is recalculating every time the offset changes. That could be a style choice if you're going for some kind of stop motion look maybe, but that's not what I want here, so I'm actually going to move my remesh before the noise. Dig it. Now I want to populate the land with some trees. We'll use a tube object as the base set to polygon with only four columns and end caps checked on and I'm going to go with four for the height roughly 
uh, and then right click copy parameter and then paste the parameter in the center y and divide it by two so that the bottom is always at the origin then set the first radius to zero to create a little point and duplicate the whole setup to create a trunk uh, setting the radius back to one and making the height a lot shorter and the overall radius thinner now if you merge the two and then actually go to the trunk copy the height and then go into the tree and in the center position add the parameter there so that way however you adjust the trunk height it actually moves the tree height as well and we're just going to grab our bevel and facet from over here and we've got a tree so to make points let's start with this terrain base and drop an attribute delete just to get rid of our mask attribute and make another paint node and now we can draw on where we want the trees to be I'm just going to go around our water okay Now make a scatter node and check on density attribute and type mask and then adjust for however many trees you want. I'm going to go relatively low numbers since I'm going to keep them pretty big, but if you want to make a bunch of small ones, maybe you want more. Um, all right. And now make a copy to points node and merge this in and we've got trees. So now just add an attribute randomize node to make a P scale attribute. and set the dimensions to one and change it to something you're happy with. All right, and I'm just gonna give this a little color as well and merge that in. Now, the last thing that I wanna do is just make a mountain in the background of our scene. So again, I'm gonna take our base ground setup, drag that over, merge it in and push the grid back a bit and make it a little wider then delete these mask nodes i'll delete this secondary noise as well and swap this clamp out for an absolute node so that everything just points upwards so let's increase the frequency in the z and decrease it in the x to make the mountains bump up the amplitude a bunch all right, now the last thing I wanna do is make the mountains blend into the ground a bit. So I'm gonna do a vector to float for the P and then fit on the Z value and multiply that by the noise. And I'm just gonna mess around with the values on this fit to ramp the mountain back as we go. You could actually do this by taking the position of where the grid is or something like that, but for our sake, it's pretty quick to just tweak these values. Um, I like to increase the remesh size a bit and then transform the mountains down so we avoid any weird possible intersections. And I'm just gonna tweak the color to look a little more atmospheric to go with our low poly scene. And there you have it. Pretty quick, pretty easy setup. I have a lot of fun making these small scenes like this and I hope you do too. You can get some really cool details, really cool looks if you just take the time to mess around with them. So have at it, check out the project files on the site and until next time.